Lynn Jurich. I'm the CEO of Sunrun, uh, changing the future of energy here in the U.S. Sunrun's business model is to offer basically solar as a service to consumers. So consumers like solar energy, they get it, but they think it's expensive, they think it's a lot of work to you know, figure out exactly what kind of technology they want to put on their rooftop. So we took away all of those problems by going to a homeowner and saying, we'll pay to install the system on your roof, you just essentially have to lend us your roof and then we'll just bill you each month for your electricity, just like your utility company. But it's actually cheaper, and it's green, and it's produced on your rooftop. Back in business school, my classmate Ed Fenster approached me and said, I have an idea. We just looked at the market, and it was just so obviously huge. I mean, there are very few opportunities to enter a market where even in its earliest phase, you know you can undercut $6 billion in annual sales. And so you just felt like it intrinsically made sense and, you know, is sort of the classic, you know, business school, geez, if I could just get 1% of this pie, you know, this business works. And so you just had conviction around that. It wasn't one of these scenarios where we spent a ton of time doing research or writing business plans. We just said, let's go try to bid on a project. We started while we were at Stanford. The company was run for seven months, you know, out of the attic of my house in San Francisco. And, uh, you know, we'd be up in the roof of my house, you know, on cell phones trying to get these deals to happen. And we bid, and I, I think it was British Telecom wanted to build a big system on one of their campuses in the U.S. And we went out and we pitched it. We said, we can raise the capital behind this, let's yes. give it a try. And we certainly didn't win that deal. <laughs> but it made us realize that there was a market and that we had a business and we quickly pivoted over to the consumer end market as opposed to the commercial end market and that was a wise choice. We had no idea <laughs> a lot of the ups and downs along the way, how painful it would be, um, how many sleepless nights we would have. It was a frightening ride for the first couple of years, you know, obviously as we were just starting to close our first project finance. Uh, transaction uh, over the summer of 2008, you know, the whole world melted down. You know, we ended up closing our, our first project finance fund the day the S&P hit an 11-year low in, in uh, November of 2008. And so when the markets collapsed, you know, we were sitting there faced with, can we get this capital raised? Do we have to shut the business down? It did also happen that, you know, in the end of 2008, the laws subsidizing solar all changed and we had to restart the business. And I remember Ed and I looked at each other and we just said, we're going to get it done because we have to. We have no choice. And so it's just, you just look straight forward. You don't look at, at you don't turn to the side and you just go for it. In January 2009, you know, we had nine sales. We have four digits of monthly new originations now. We have raised the capital to purchase about $2 billion in residential solar facilities, about $1.6 billion of which we've purchased. And that growth is almost hard to sort of comprehend because the business isn't that much different. It's just the number of zeros kind of in the columns keep increasing. Oftentimes, when you go to business school, it's so easy to take a safe career. You know, it's easy to get a great consulting job or investing job or investment banking job. And, and oftentimes a lot of these, you know, smart MBAs want to poke holes in businesses. And I think Stanford is unique in that it really teaches you the analytical skills to assess a business, but without losing that hope, without losing that optimism. That sort of resilience, that sort of not giving up, works and you know it's it's common among many entrepreneurs when I talk to my colleagues and you know almost everybody has had those moments where it feels as though there's no way to succeed but what's common about the people who do is that they don't give up don't give up that's the secret <laughs>